Jesus. Hallelujah. Give him some more praise. He's worthy. I'm telling you, the more you praise him, the better he likes it. If you need a miracle, praise him. If you want to see one, praise him. Hallelujah. You can sit down. God is so good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's good to see everybody. It's just awesome. I got I know the cure for depression. I know the cure for sickness. I know the cure for whatever you need. I got it in my hand. If you got your Bible, hold it up. Say this is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. Say it, it's the seed. The Word of God is seed. And the more I plant it, the more I'm blessed. So remember that. This is seed. Every word in here is seed. And when you plant it, you get a crop. You get a crop. It's seed. But I was thinking yesterday and today, a pretty good while, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I, I, was thinking, I said, Lord, what a sinner I was. I thank God I'm saved and you forgive me. But, but church, do you realize that you sinned against your family? You sinned against your friends. You sinned against people that you didn't want to witness to for the glory of God. What a sinner we was. And the Bible says for all of us, everybody, you sitting in here, you're, you, if, you, if you're not saved, if you never went to Jesus for forgiveness of your sin, you're a sinner. And you ain't only sinned against yourself, you've sinned against everybody that you come in contact with. And if you don't, don't get something done about them sins, you'll face judgment for them. And I, I got to thinking about it. I said, God, what a sinner I was. I mean, in, in the military for 18 years, a sinner. And everything I'd done and every, every way I looked, was wrong and to think that God loved me enough to pay for all them sins I mean he, he paid for every sin that you've committed or every sin that you've been guilty of he, he took a whooping for it that, that we could get forgiveness like Corey Ten Boone said God puts our sins in the sea of forgetfulness Never to remember them no more. No matter what you've done or how bad a sinner you was, if you've asked God to forgive you and you've t repented, you're not guilty now. And Romans 6.23, it says, For the gift that God gives us, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We don't do nothing to receive it. We just accept what Jesus done, what, what a price he paid for us. Uh, and, and I just uh, humble myself and, and I say, God, what a sinner I was. Church people don't realize it. You sin against your family. You sin against your kids. You sin against everybody unless you've got forgiveness and ask God to come into your heart and forgive you for them sins. That's what he went to the cross for. You can go to heaven sick, but you can't go to heaven with sins in your life. You have to have forgiveness. And I, I just got down on my knees and, and uh, repented all over again. I said, God, I just want to humble myself. And, and thank you for paying a price that I couldn't pay. Every one of us, you, you, you were guilty and I was guilty. And children, we ought to appreciate what Jesus done for us. I mean, when you look at them cross, it's empty. But he hung on that cross one time. 
and the thorns that they put on his head was for you and for me. And, and he took so much time out for us, and people don't take time out for him. When, when you come to church, you're taking time out for Jesus because he took time out for you. Well, I got to thinking about that. God, how guilty I was. How guilty I was. For 33 years, I'd done what I wanted to do and, 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 and uh, didn't pay the grace of God of it, no attention. And, I, and I'm thankful now that I realize that Jesus paid a price for me. He paid a price. I want to live for him. I want to, I want to be a witness for him. I don't, want to, I don't want to be the kind of person I used to be. And when I'm around somebody and I'm talking to somebody, I want Jesus to be the center of my conversation. I want, you know, if the sun shines on my head, that will give good light. But I want to be the light for Jesus. When I get up in the morning, I, my f desire is to please him, and I hope it's yours, uh, because he's the one that takes care of us. And I tell you, that trumpet fixing the sound, if you're in here, you won't hear it. But the ones that's ready to go, when we hear that trumpet, we're going to be caught up in the air and to ever be with the Lord. And we, we're thinking about eternity. Eternity, eternity, and when I go, I want the Lord to say, "Well done, well done." I don't want to hear nothing. Just to say, "Come on in, well done." And and if we live for Him and we we do what He wants us to do, we'll hear it. Now I appreciate everybody being here. I just uh, want you to realize, like I realized, that before you got saved. Everybody you come in contact with, you was a sinner. Everybody. But now, we're a light for Jesus. And you know, we got the good news. We got something to share with people. Uh, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make you rich, and he has no sorrow to it. So where does all the sorrow come from? It comes from not knowing Jesus. And for opening the door up where he can... Torment you. I tell you, church, church, we got to fight. We got to fight. You got to fight for your health. You got to fight for your prosperity. You got to fight for everything that God done for you because it's a thief down here that wants to steal it from you. He wants to steal your health. He wants to steal your money. He wants to steal your friends. He wants to steal your family. Everything he does, he wants to steal to steal from you. And if he can steal your joy, he'll steal your goods. If he can steal your joy, he's got you because you'll lose your strength and you wind up losing everything you got. Don't give up your joy. Fight for it. Leap for it. Do whatever you have to do for joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Bless God. Hey, I can stop and start. <laughs> Glory to God.
Jesus. Hallelujah. God's good, ain't it? Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Y'all help me out in case I get off. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'll try to pray that every morning. Uh, it's powerful. Powerful. Uh, God just gives us so many tools that makes us winners, makes us winners. Anyway, the Bible said the just shall live by faith. I'll talk about faith a little while. What do you say? The just shall live by faith. How many of you live in by faith? Glory to God, I'm telling you. The just shall live. In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, it says, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. A farmer, he's got to have seed before he can get a crop. And church, the word, every verse in the Bible is a seed. All the promises in the Bible, we have to plant a seed to get that promise. Like Luke 6, 38. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. That's the first verse I got a hold of when I got saved, give. Uh, the first word in it says, give. Well, if I want to be blessed, I'll plant that seed. What is the seed? Give. Give. And it's not just talking about money. It's talking about if, if, if you need help, pray for somebody else. If you, any, any way you can help anybody, you're planting a seed that's going to bring you a good crop. A good crop. I've told this story a, a many a time. Uh, I used to teach a Bible at Brother Ronnie Seaboat in Best Plant. And uh, they would pay the people to hear me. That's awesome, ain't it? A country boy. And uh, there's a lot of Spanish there in the room. Brother Leslie, he was there. And, uh, uh, but it was this young man that sat in a corner and with his head down. Just ever, ever meeting, he would sit there with his head down. And then one day he said, can I talk to you after service? I said, yeah. He said, I lost everything that I had. Lost my home, my family, and everything playing the lottery. Got hooked on it. You can get hooked on stuff, church, I'm telling you. And uh, <clears throat> he said, I'm sleeping in my car. And uh, anyway, talked to him. And he had a job and all. Well, the, the next time I went, he had a little box about this big. had some canned stuff in it. And I'll, <clears throat> he said, I want to give this to the food ministry. And the next time, he had a big box. And it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Well, the first thing you know, I'm, he, had, he had him a home, place to live. And then the next thing I know, I missed him. And so I got a call from Gallatin down there at the Hope Center. They had some canned stuff they wanted to give our food ministry. And I went down there. You know who was in charge of it? <laughs> he was. <laughs> sure. You can have a breakthrough by your giving. I, I got a breakthrough by my giving. I mean, and not just giving money. I'm talking about loving people, helping people, do do what you can do for people. And God, you take care of God, Ben, as he'll take care of yours. He's awesome. But that's a seed. When you plant whatever you plant, it's a seed that's going to bring you a harvest somewhere down the road. It could be fast and all, but uh, it works. I've been living that way for 48 years, and it works. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. God's word is a guarantee. When you plant the seed for the promise, the promise belongs to you. The word of God in Luke chapter 5 verse 1, and, and it came to pass that as the people pressed up on him to hear the word of God. What did they press up on him for? Yeah. To hear the word. How many of you here this morning to hear the word? Amen. The word's the most important thing. 
in your life? The Word. Say the Word. The Word, the word of God. That's what we live by. James 1.22 said, Be a doer of the Word, not a hearer only, deceiving your own self. There's a lot of people deceiving themselves. A lot of people. A lot of people. Uh, if, if you stray away from the Word of God, you, you're deceiving yourself, and I am too. In uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 28, it says, But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the Word of God and keep it that hear the Word of God and keep it. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. Get that Word. That's why it's important to read, to read, to read. The Word is health and medicine for your flesh. That's a seed that God gives us in His Word. His Word is medicine and health for your flesh. So what should I grab a hold of the first thing every morning? The Word of God. I should get it before I get my pills. Got awful quiet in here. That's a guarantee for health and medicine for your flesh. It's the Word of God. And that's why the enemy, the devil, Slewfoot, don't want you in the Word of God because it will deliver you. It will break every chain. I ought to got an amen out of that. The Word of God will break every chain if you use it. If you use it. If you use it. And Acts 12, 24 said, But the Word of God grew and multiplied. I've said this for years. God watches over His Word in, I believe it's Isaiah 55, verse 11. He watches over His Word to perform it. Well, the more His Word I can get in my life, the more He's going to watch over me. So I want that Word down in me, around me, and I want to carry it with me everywhere I go. Carry it with me. Because you don't never know when you're going to get attacked. Satan don't send up no flare. And the minute he can find a, a crack in the door, he's not no gentleman. He'll bust through. He'll bust through. That's why the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Any part of the armor that I don't have on, he's got an advantage at me. Let me say that again. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The whole armor. Any part of that armor that's listed down through there, that I leave out of my life, he's got an open door to hit me. And I, I can tell you, when he hits you, you better be full of the Word of God. You better be ready to fight. You better be ready to cast down imaginations because you, you can have a lot of imaginations. You go to the doctor and he tells you he can't do nothing to you. You can have imagination. I might as well give up, but, but whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Jesus said, I took your infirmities, I bore your sickness, and by my stripes you're what? Healed. Healed. So that's settled. I, I may not look like it, I may not feel like it, but I'm just healed. And I'm going to praise God for it, and, and I'm going to keep plucking. You can't, you can't give up if you give up. The only kind of people that's defeated is the kind that give up. Can't give up. You gotta fight. You gotta fight. You gotta fight. You gotta fight. Look at your neighbor and say, You gotta fight. If you want the best God got for you, you gotta fight for it because you got an enemy trying to knock you out of it. Amen. In 2 Timothy 2 9, it said, The word of God is not bound. The word is not bound. I mean, the word is everything to you and me if you're born again. You're born again. It's uh, like the people used to say when I was a kid, I need some Hattie call. Well, I need the Word of God all the time. <laughs> That's my Hattie call. It, it, it gives you power. It gives you strength. It gives you hope. Where there is no hope. Amen. The Word of God not found. In Hebrews 4.12 it says, 
For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul, spirit, and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's powerful. That's powerful. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. And so, why not think on the Word of God all the time and be blessed? Be blessed. Whatever you're thinking on is what you're going to become. Whatever you think. If you think on what your body tells you, you better look out. Especially when you get 82. I have to keep my thinking straightened out. If I keep it, my thinking right, my body has to follow it. Has to follow it. Whatever, you, whatever you're thinking on, you're going to become. If you think you can't make it, look out. Look out. If you're in the cannot group, you're in trouble. Get in the can do group. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. What's that word mean? All things. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. We quote that and then we let the devil run over us. Why not run over him instead of letting him run over you? We we need we need to bark louder than he does. I'm telling you, uh, all the old time ministers and all said people that don't talk to the devil will live a defeated life. James said, "Resist the devil, and he'll what? Flee from you." So you got to resist him. Got to resist him. And I tell you, it, it, it's violent sometimes. I mean, you gotta you gotta get mad at 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 the situation he's trying to put you in, and, and you've got to get mad at it, and you've got to stay mad at it till you get out of it. Amen? And it works. It works. The Word of God works. For, for the Word is, of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What does Romans chapter 12 say? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you don't renew your mind in the Word of God, you're going to be defeated. I'm going to be honest with you. If you don't renew your mind in the Word of God, when sickness and stuff like that comes to you, you won't have by his stripes I'm healed in there. And you've got to keep it in there. I'm telling you, pain can get severe. But I'm telling you, you've got to overcome that pain with the Word of God, with the confession of your faith. Confession of your faith. Faith. You know, through faith, the world was framed. I mean, Jesus framed the world by the faith of His Word. Your life is framed by the words you speak. Your life is framed by the word you speak. It's one benefit I don't never want. You may get mad at me for saying this, but I can't have it. I, I don't want that benefit is to hang a sticker on my car to get a free parking place. It's nothing wrong with it, but when you get well, throw it away. Right? There's nothing wrong with it if you got to have it. But, but I'm telling you, a double confession won't work. Man, it got quiet in here. But I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. It's my responsibility to tell you the truth. Tell you the truth. And it's a benefit. Bless God, you go to Walmart, man, you might drive 10 minutes. <laughs> find and, unless you pray like Pastor Dorothy does. <laughs> she prays for favor of parking, and it gets it. But, but uh, it's something to think about. Like I say, I hope you love me anyway. But uh, Romans 10, why is the Word of God so important to you? In Romans ten seventeen, it says, Faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So the Word of God is the most important thing 
to me and to you. Your faith will carry you where you need to go. Your faith will carry you where you need to go. Where you need to go. Hallelujah. In, in Mark chapter 6, verse 5 and 6, and he could there do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the village teaching. He marveled at their unbelief. And he went round about the village teaching. Why, why did he do that? Faith comes from here. He was teaching the people about the Word of God, where faith could come to them and they could get their blessings. Amen? Yes. Faith comes from here, not just here, and here. I preach to myself all the time. I'm preaching to myself this morning, and I believe it to help you. I'm preaching to myself. Faith comes from here. I need to hear it, I need to hear it, I need to hear it, and I need to rehear it. Uh, I got a thing when uh, Pastor Dorothy's shopping. I, I'm sitting in the car sticking it in my ear listening to the Word of God most of the time. I'm getting a blessing because faith comes from... It don't become because you've heard it. It's people that can quote Scripture, but they're not feeding themselves on it and they're just quoting it off the top of their head. It's with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. What is salvation? It's safety, healing, and deliverance. Well, when you say you're saved, you're talking about having safety, healing, and deliverance. Salvation is safety, healing, and deliverance. Hallelujah. That's, that's why the enemy don't want us to go to church where they teach the Word. Teach the Word. Teach the Word. It's important to hear the Word of God. Say, the Word is seed. And as I plant the Word, I'm planting seed that will give me a blessing. Church, I don't know. I want you blessed. Don't get wrong, but I want to be blessed too. And the only way I can be blessed is by planting the Word of God, which is a seed, to get me blessed. I didn't get to to be 82 by falling off a cabbage truck. I'm not bragging on myself, but I'm, I'm telling you, you read the paper. If people leave out here 60, 65, a lot of ministers have left out of here strong. I'm talking about faith teachers left out of here early. But the only way the work of God, Word of God works for you is you plant the Word for a seed and God will give you the harvest. Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, or Apollos planted, and I watered one or the other, and God gave the increase. Amen. When I'm reading the Bible, I'm looking for a seed that I can plant that'll get the church blessed, get me and my family blessed. A man that don't live for God, he, he is, his, his family is suffering. His family is absolutely suffering. I mean, my daddy worked. I worked. But he didn't know anything about tithing and the blessings of God. And so the harder we worked, the harder we worked. And the same way was with me when I, when I got, got out in life. I didn't know anything about giving, about tithing. But church, that's where the blessings are, is when you plant the seed like God said, and then he blesses. Who, who wouldn't give a dime for a dollar? I mean, that's what, when the, the little Baptist minister sat down and told me about tithing, I was a gambler, man, I could count. And I said, you mean, if God gives me a dollar, I just got to give him a dime? You know what I've done? I made a covenant with God. I said, God, every dollar you give me, I'm going to give you a dime. And you know what? I give more than that, but it brought me out. How many of you has it brought you out? I mean, it, it brought me out. Listen, uh, and, 
and I was under. I had nowhere to go but to Jesus, and I went to the right place. He'll help you. He'll help you. He'll help you. And he couldn't do no, no mighty works, save he laid his hands on a few sick folks. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went round about the village teaching. You know, Jesus never marveled but twice in the Bible. Once he marveled because of their unbelief, and the next time he marveled because the man had great faith. Great faith. Had great faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible said, Now faith is. So when do you use your faith? In whatever situation you, you use it now. Now. Now for, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if I need something I can't see, I've got to use my faith now and believe I got it. Man, that, that's, that's so simple. It, it, uh, it's just so simple. It, it, uh, a lot of people are just too smart for it. I mean, it's the truth. I mean, a lot of people just say, I mean, if, you ain't, if they can't see it, they can't believe for it. Can't believe for it. I, I've had a many a person I've witnessed to, and they say, I, I just can't believe in nothing I can't see and feel. Can't believe it. But, but when you believe it, and you can't see it, or you can't feel it, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. Same way with salvation. Nobody's never got saved unless they accepted it. Accepted it. If they're waiting to feel like they get saved, they don't never feel it till they accept it. When you accept it, you, God will give you the assurance it's there. Out of the heart, the mouth confesses. Out of the heart. Man believes in the righteousness. Hallelujah. It's heart, all about your heart, not your head. Your heart is a foot from your head. You send them both being, hallelujah. I'm not a doctor, I'm just saying that. <laughs> but I've heard it, your, your heart is a foot from your head, hallelujah. And, and the elders obtained a good report by their faith. What kind of report do you want to leave? I want to leave a good one. Because your legacy lives on after you're gone. Did you know it? Your legacy lives on by your family, your friends, and people they talk about. I want to leave a good, a good faith report. That people know I love Jesus. And that, that's the key. He's the, he's the one. He's the one. The elders had a good report by faith. In, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, We walk by faith and not by our feelings. We walk by faith and not by our feelings. If you just heal when you feel good, it'll be right the opposite a lot of times. Because we walk by faith and not our feelings. I'm going to praise God I'm healed all the time. I'm going to praise Him and magnify His name. That's where joy comes from. You praise in the Lord. Moses, when he left his hand down, they lost the battle. Sure, when you let your hand down, you better watch out. If, if, if a police sticks a gun in your back, what are you going to do? You're going to raise them hands. Listen, I'm telling you, and it's better to raise them for Jesus. And when, when you're raising your hands and praise him, that's, that's a total victory. Total victory. I remember the first time I raised mine up, I thought I had two concrete blocks on my hand. I was Southern Baptist, and <laughs> they didn't raise their hand. And I uh, went to hear Jimmy Swagger in Nashville. And I'll never forget, I took my Sunday school class. And uh, this little fellow was sitting on the side of me, and I finally got my hands up in the air, and he punched me on the side and said, hey, we're Baptist. <laughs> I will forget that. <laughs> I had a long time after I learned better to explain it to him, you know. That, uh, but you lift your hands. I mean, the Bible says lift up your hands and praise God. That's a sign of total victory. You're talking about breaking every chain. 
when you lift them hands and you start praising God, them chains will fall off. They'll fall off. They'll fall off and, and you'll be free and I'll be free. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If I diligently seek him, what's he going to do? He's going to bless me. He's going to reward me. And he wants to, church. But if you don't diligently seek him, you, you tie in his hands. Tie in his hands. You can cry, squall, and do everything you want to, but you'll never move God. The only thing that moves God is faith. Is faith. And everything you receive from God, you receive by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Are you diligently seeking Him? What's the first thing on your mind when you wake up every morning? The second thing is on my mind is heading for the cup of coffee. But you know, I get my coffee and then I raise the window and watch the Lord turn the light on. He turns it on every morning. It'll be so dark and then all of a sudden you see this light creeping in and the darkness going away. He does it. He does it. You know, they can't even figure out why the world, the earth is, is staying here. It ain't no strings on it holding it. Only God, the Word of God, the Word of God. He framed everything by His Word. And He tells us, you frame your life by the Word you speak. If I talk about how poor I am and I can't get by and all this stuff, it just gets badder and badder and badder. But if I talk about how blessed I am because I can breathe and I'm saved and I'm not going to hell and I keep bragging on the Lord, He'll bring me out. He'll bring you out of the mire clay and set your foot on the rock to stay. I'm living proof, and I know many of y'all are, that He'll bring you out. Bring you out. He'll bring you out where you can help bring somebody else out. He's so good. Without faith, you can't please him. In First Timothy six twelve, it, it tells us, "See, you got to fight. You got to fight the good fight of faith." Well, how are you going to fight the good fight of faith if you don't know something about faith? I mean, we we can fuss at one another all we want to and say you can't do this, you can't do that. But I'm telling you, without faith, you can. If you don't know about faith and know how to operate in faith, you can't live for God 100%. But I'm just telling you the truth. That's why you have to stay in that word. Stay in that word. A pastor that don't teach on giving robs his congregation. Robs his congregation. I, I used to teach a Bible in a, in a, a sort of a bad area. People didn't have nothing. And uh, I didn't receive no offering, and the Lord really got over on me. He said, you're robbing them, robbing them. Because you don't start up here. You start where you're at. You start where you're at. It's, it's the little lady in the Bible gave the Lord a penny and got his attention, got his attention. Stood still. Blind Bartimaeus. Because... Well, you can do the same thing blind Martin Bartimaeus done and you can get his attention. Lord, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. If, if you're ashamed to scream it out, you won't get it. Because he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. You got to, you got to, no, no matter where you're at, what do you say? By his stripes, I'm healed. No matter how you feel, what do you say? Stripes, I'm healed. No matter what the doctor says, stripes, I'm healed. Whatever comes your way, I'm healed. And, and you say it, you don't think it, say it out loud. By his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed coming out. 
Where can I go and not be blessed? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. Well, if, if he tells us to fight the good fight, it must be a bad fight. So I don't want to fight the bad fight. I want to fight the good fight. Confession brings possession. What you say is what you have, and what you have is what you say. Ask yourself, what have I been saying? What have I been saying? When people ask you how you feel, what do you say? When, when, when your body tells you something different, what do you say? Say, by his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes I'm The telephone is a lot of people's enemy. Somebody can call them and say, how you feel? <laughs> I try not to ask people how they feel because you can put them in a bad spot. Because most people think they're lying if they say, by his stripes I'm filled, or I, in the name of Jesus I feel good. But you're saying what the Word says. You, you're not saying what, 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 what you, you're saying what God said. He said, by his stripes I'm healed. The joy of the Lord my strength. He said, with long life I'll satisfy you. Long life. What is long life? That's about how much you want. You I believe you determine how much you want. And that's why I want to stay happy for the Lord. Because he's the one who gives it to you and he's the one who say, come up hither. And, and you know, I enjoy living for him. It's a blessing to get up in the morning and say, Lord, what have you got today? What, what do you want us to do today? Uh, what, what's important to you today? Not me. What's important to you? Uh, that's his, it's his will, not your will or my will. It's, it's his will that you have to. And you get in his will. I'm glad you're here, Michael. You make my day. <laughs> See, you didn't know you could be such a blessing, blessing to a pastor by just coming and sitting on the seat. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of people out there that, that you just have to love. I had to be loved in here. I'm not trying to embarrass you, I'll let you. you know it. A good boy, I'm, I'm telling you. I wish I'd have been that good when I was his age. Help, helps people and don't mind it. Got a heart. Got a good heart. Good heart. God's good, church. Hallelujah. In, in Psalm 91, start with the 14th verse to the 6th, it's seven things that God said he would do for you. Seven things he said he would do for us. In Psalm 91, verse 4, because he has set his love upon me. Now let me ask, where's your love at? Is your love truly set up on Jesus? That's what you have to answer. And you know, love is more to love than just L-O-V-E. Love is action. Amen. Action. You spell love with action. And so the Bible says, because he, or because you, or because I, has set my love upon him, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high. Now, now that's a promise from God. But you've got to have your love set up on him. So the thing I've got to answer, have I really got my love set up on him or I'm just talking? Because L-O-V-E is not love. Action is love. Action. Action. So I've got to make sure my love is set up on him. And he said he would deliver me and he would set me on high. Now, man's not going to set you on high. The, the world is not going to set no Holy Ghost-filled pastor or person on high. They, they try to stay away from you. But they can't outdo God. <laughs> He'll set you on high. Me, me and Brother Ronnie was in Haiti. And... Uh, and uh, 
probably the least recognized in the bunch. We, we stayed behind passing out tracks and had, had a good time. But we come to the tent, and it's probably, what, four or 5,000 kids there? I don't know. I ain't never seen as many. And, 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 all, and all them pastors on the stage, you know who the man asked to give the word? Me. Now, if they had had anything to do with it, it wouldn't have been me. <laughs> Only God can do that. Only God. Do. I heard them talking. Wonder why he picked him. Well, he didn't have no choice. God told him to do it. But you, we got a promise, church. He said he would set us on high. He, he set you on high. Make sure your love is for him. Make sure you love. And, and that's two things right there. I will set him on high because he had known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. See, if my love is truly set on him, when I pray, he's going to answer me. Amen. He said, I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him. So if I have trouble, he's going to be with me, and he ain't only going to be with me, he's going to deliver me. Because when they fight you, and don't think the enemy won't set you up, but when they fight you, they're fighting him, and he'll deliver you. He'll deliver you. And he, he didn't stop there, and he said, I'll honor him. Well, I'd rather have God's honor and man's honor any time because when God honors you, you are honored. Amen? And he said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, well, I'm not got satisfied yet. I'm 82. That's one of the keys to staying here longer. <laughs> Don't get satisfied. Get, be busy for the Lord. Be, be, be doing something. Uh, I got a friend, he's, he's so sick, he can't get out and, uh, and all. And, and, uh, but you know what he does? He sent me a case of Bibles every month. To get it, get it. He's he busy, busy. He, he said, I can't do it, but I'll help you do it. Help you do it. I got some laying on the table. Get you one, give them away. I took them to North Carolina, I went everywhere with them. Bless him. People need the word. People need the word. Amen. With long life will I satisfy him. That's seven things in them few verses that God said he would do for you and for me if I set my love on him. That's a promise. That's a promise. Check yourself out. Make sure that you're lo I love Dorothy, but I tell you, my love is set on Jesus. I love the church, love everybody here. But my love is set on Jesus. Listen, he's the one that paid the price where I could get my sins forgiven. Forgiven. And church, I got to think, like I said, I got to thinking about how awful, how awful sin is before you get saved. I mean, hey, I, I sinned against my family, I sinned against my kids, I sinned against my friends. And, and God loved me enough to forgive me. Forgive me. I don't want to take it light. I don't want to take it light. I want to be thankful. I want, I want to thank him so much that I could have went to hell. I could have went to hell. And, and it's no way out. No way out. I saw a picture on TV the other day. I flipped it on. They were showing this big hole in the ground and people were falling off in it. Is a, is a symbol of hell. I've, in, in, in my ministry, I've seen two people that was in hell that God brought back to life. And the, the terrible story that they told, I'm telling you, thank God we don't have to go there. That's the most blessing that we, you can have is to be saved and washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seven things he said he would do. For us. Number one, he would deliver us, set us on high, answer us, 
and in trouble he'll deliver us, honor us, and long life is satisfied. I got that laying on my desk. I don't want to get them seven things. If I set my love up on it, and church, whatever you think on is is going to give you a blessing or torment. Whatever you think on is either going to bless you or torment you. Let me get that over to you strong. Whatever I'm thinking on is either going to bless me or torment me. I'll either be justified or condemned by what I think and what I speak. You can condemn yourself by what comes out your mouth. And if you keep your thinking right, the Bible says you'll have perfect peace. He that keeps his mind on the Lord shall have perfect peace. You can't get that at the drugstore. You can't get that nowhere but from Jesus. If you keep your mind, I don't care what kind of turmoil or what the devil's trying to throw at you, if you keep your mind on Jesus, you can have perfect peace. You know how long it takes me to go to sleep? You ask Pastor Dorothy. When I lay down, I say, Lord, you said you'd give your beloved sleep. I'm ready for it. And you know what? I'm gone. Gone. I don't, I don't lay in tumult and, and think and all. I, I want to sleep in Jesus. Because you know when you're sleeping, your body is healing. The doctors tell you that. People tell you that. When, when you're sleeping, your body is healing from all the stuff it had to go through with that day. So if you don't sleep good, your body's going to suffer. And so go, go to sleep thinking about Jesus. Go to sleep thinking about heaven. Go to sleep thinking about what the Lord wants you to do tomorrow, whatever. Just keep him on your mind. Amen. That's good preaching, I'm telling you. I don't care if I am doing it. Watch what you think. Your victory is in your thinking. As he think us, so is he. So is he. That's the word of God. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, we start. Be careful for nothing. Or be anxious for nothing. Be anxious. Be careful for nothing, but be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Here it comes. Let your request be made known unto who? Oh, Brother Ronnie, I got so many needs. I, I, I need this. I need that. I, uh, uh, I can't make it at all this. Who am I letting my request be made known to? Brother Ranny. Now, Brother Ranny helped me all he could, but, he, but God's the one I need to let my request be made known to. A lot of people don't realize that. And you know what? If you go to God last, here it comes. If you go to him last, it may be a while before you get it. Who's the man in the Bible? He didn't go to God about his feet. He went to a physician. What happened to him? Make God first. Make him first, no matter what it is. Make him first. Make him first. The Bible says, seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Church, all these things, everything is figured in them. Everything, everything, all these things. Let your request be made known unto God. And he, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds to Christ Jesus. 
when I let my request be made unto God, He's going to give me peace. He's going to give me peace. Because when you knock on the door at somebody's house, they let you in, you're in, right? Well, when you go to God with your request and you know He hears you, you're going to have peace. Peace. And it says, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So cast all your cares. I don't care what it is. Cast them over on the Lord because He can handle them. He can handle them. Philippians 4 eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Read that often. Read it often. Who's he talking to? He's talking to the Christian. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which are have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. If I obey this scripture, God's going to be with me. God's going to be with me. If I, if I think on these things, he's going to be with me. If it's good, a good report, and all, that's what I need to think of. You know, church, you and I am, we're responsible for what we think. We think. God don't control your thinking system. You do, and I do. He gives you words out of the Bible and all what to think on, but it's up to you to think on. If it's good, think on it. If it's not, cast it down. Cast down imagination. When that pain gets so bad, cast it down in Jesus' name. By his stripes I am healed. Hallelujah. Faith has action. Action. You can sit down and die. What did the three uh, lepers sitting outside of the gate of Samaria? Why sit here? If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go in, we're going to die. Let's go in. And when they started moving, God started working. They wound up with so much stuff, they had to turn it over to the people that put them out on the outside. I think about that all the time. The more rackets you make, the faster your victory is coming. The faster. I know I live by that. Bless God. I, I've had so much pressure put on me sometimes. I felt like one of them steamers, like a ball, you know, put the corn in, and all of a sudden it gets so hot, it goes, hee, hee, hee. <laughs> and that's the time to start praising and worshiping God. I'm telling you, it, it brings deliverance. It brings deliverance. I've prayed my way for 48 years. 48 years. I mean, and, and I know it works. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bring forth evil things. I know I was, when I was working, I got saved, and the men there were bad about telling jokes. And if you ever work public work, you know what I'm talking about. And so they'd, they'd come up. I said, Lord, how am I going to get rid of this? And they'd come up and want to tell me that. So I said, wait a minute. I said, Jesus, you want to hear this? And when I looked back down, they'd be gone. <laughs> God will give you a way. He'll give you a way. I mean, he, he'll give you a way. I uh, know when I got saved and all these people would call me from these joints and things and want me to come gamble and all. I said, Lord, how am I going to get away with it? He said, when you answer the phone, say, praise the Lord. And so I picked the phone. I said, praise the Lord. And I'd hear it go, click. <laughs> God's got an answer. And I've been doing that for 48 years. I, when I answered the phone, I say, in case one of them called me. 
I say, praise the Lord. And it, it works. It works. I'm pr- you want to praise him with your breath and everything you do. A good man brings treasures out of his heart. In Matthew twelve twenty six, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. And we need to watch what we say. We need to be careful. Say good things. Because one day we're going to stand before Jesus. And I tell you, if our slate not clean, we'll be in trouble. Be in trouble. But thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. For by thy word thou shalt be.